books that came out on May 6, 2009. As always, I'm Craig, your host. This is the third of three installments this week. If you're looking for our Marvel reviews, they're in part one. If you're looking for our DC and IDW reviews, they're in part two. This is part three. It's all indie stuff. We're going to have a lot of stuff to cover. There's seven books here. Uh, and special thanks to BittenByBooks.com, where I'm going to start reviewing uh, some Supernatural books, starting right here with Buffy number 25. Hey, there we are. I have avoided this book because, quite frankly, it's time to, it's time to actually admit this. I am not a Joss Whedon fan. I'm sure it's come out in the uh, when it reviews Joshing X Men a long time ago. I have just never been a fan of Buffy. I've never been a fan of a lot of Joss Whedon's work. It's just never clicked with me. I don't know what it is. You know, the pop culture references, the quirky dialogue, just don't ever pay off. But here we are with Buffy 25, and. Uh, it's, it's not Joss's writing, it's Doug Petrie's writing, but still, I feel like the point is here, you know, this is a Joss Whedon universe, there's going to be quirky characters, there's going to be fun pop culture references, and ultimately this is going to be where the payoff comes in, and it's an excellent book. This book is gangbusters. This is an amazing book, definitely worth reading, whether you know anything about Buffy or not, it's a very interesting book. Um, which shockingly surprises me. I expected to be really lost when I got into this book. I figured, okay, I'm going to get in here and I'm just going to be completely confused, not know who any of the characters are. But come on, pop culture has assimilated us to the point where we know we know who Buffy is by now, and it makes sense who she is. And you know, the characters, if you can catch on from there, excellent stuff. Highly recommended if you're not already reading this. I know many people are. Again, probably one of the best 299 books out there. Definitely underrated. Next up from Red 5, Atomic Robo, Volume 3, Shadow from Beyond Time. It's very funny. It deals with HP Lovecraft, which uh, I think is a very interesting approach for Robo. One of the things I talked about, maybe, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it in the free comic book day review or not, but Atomic Robo is a very interesting character to me because he's not about a journey, you know, I'm not, every time I pick up a Robo book, I'm not thinking, okay, he's, last time I read, he's here, now he's going to be here. It feels like he's kind of like an old style superhero. You know, every time I see him, there's something else going on. Well, this was what was happening, you know, here's this appearance from here, you know, you don't actually have a chronology of how Robo works, you know, nothing is ever changing about his life. He works for, you know, Tesla Dine or for Nikola Tesla, and that's it. That's all you need to know, and we'll tell you stories that fit in random spots along that timeline, and you don't have to have this great continuity where we follow everything, you know, it's not really necessary. So we get a really fun story dealing with H.P. Lovecraft kicking off right here in true Robo fashion. Another great five issue miniseries, I'm sure. A nice backup story that doesn't actually deal with Robo, but deals with the scientists of Tesla Dine. Um, Scott Wagner again, right there. Great stuff from those guys, as always. Boom Studios gives us Irredeemable number two. And again, this is where I start talking. This is the Superman book I was talking about earlier. You look back, there's a lot of Superman um, analogs or, 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 or parallels coming out in various books. The Mighty, uh, Life and Times of Savior 28, and now Irredeemable. A Superman type character in various situations. Like I said, The Mighty is still good, but it's kind of slowing down and spinning its wheels. Uh, Life and Times of Savior 28 had a great first issue, and the second issue is starting to wane. I felt had uh, a first issue that was pretty good, and the more I thought about it, the less I was impacted by it. But when we get to issue two, we get a lot more story. It's not just this character going crazy, attacking him. You know, I feel like the first issue should have covered, should have been the first half of the first issue, and issue two should have been the second half of the first issue. So we had a lot more in there to get people excited about this series. Because if you bought issue one, you definitely missed the interesting part of this story. Issue two is the redemption of this idea that this story can be good, and it's gonna pay off very well, I think. So, excellent stuff. If you bought number one and you felt that it was lacking, definitely check out number two, because it will, I think it will pay off. If you don't like number two, then you can quit. Our third stop on the Scott Wagner tour of greatness is Killer Demons number three of three. This wraps up sort of predictably, of course, the Killer Demons wins. We leave the door open for a sequel, which makes it very exciting, and I'm very happy with that. Uh, Chris Yost and Scott Wagner, again, 
paying off here. Everything good I said about the first two is still here. You can find the first two, get on this book. It's about a guy who can see demons. He's got a little angel that flies around, kind of smoking a cigar, kind of angel going, yeah, I gotta start killing these demons, man. I don't know what you're doing. And he's really in trouble with it because obviously uh, he's the only one that can see the demon, well, him and the angel. But other human beings see him just killing other human beings. So he's either the greatest mass murderer the city has known or uh, he's doing God's work. We're not sure which. Um, I feel like the wrap-up is a bit convenient, you know, but again, with three issues, you kind of have to have a convenient wrap-up to say, well, this guy's killed a ton of human beings. How are we going to get out of that? Easy little loop. Uh, I'm not going to say it right here, but it just it seems a little too convenient to kind of go, oh, and that happened, by the way. That's why everything's back to normal. Just doesn't feel right. But other than that, it's still a really fun book. Uh, highly recommend it as well. Plan 9 from Outer Space strikes again. Well, guess what? Plan 9 from Outer Space can go flying! I don't even care where it lands. Blue Water Comics puts out crap, ladies and gentlemen. I can't stand this company. I can't stand the product that they put out. They've got, like, chicken scratch for font, and then they, like, run it through, and they turn it into their font, and they use it in everything they do. Plan 9 from Outer Space was so bad it was good. This book is so bad it's bad. Really bad. Stinks like Dale garbage bad. Not a lot of dialogue, just random shots of uh, Tor Johnson and whoever that Mistress of the Dark was. You know, basically the two main characters and, and a piece from the old ship from Plan 9 going around and supposedly this is going to start everything and we just rush through it and here we are, we got this crazy thing going on and then there's an ending, we don't have to explain anything because it's supposed to be bad and it's really bad and then it's over, the end. It doesn't matter, it's a terrible book. Next up, from Radical Publishing, we have Shrapnel number 5 on a much happier note. First of all, this is $2.99, and this is a really thick book. I, I, you probably can't see it on there, but it is huge, and it's hefty. Some good pages in here, some really thick stuff. I mean, yeah, you probably can't see it, but come on. It's, it's just solid, and, and as usual, you know, the radical art style holds up. Again, this is another, this is kind of a Starship Trooper style book, and we get another predictable ending. But it doesn't necessarily make it any less entertaining. The art is still good, the storyline is still solid, even if it is a bit, you know, predictable like a Hollywood movie. It doesn't matter. It's, that's not the point. You know, we're not buying Shrapnel to be surprised by where the ending goes, you know. We've seen Starship Troopers, we want the good guys to try out from the bad guys, and this book gives us that in spades. It pays off well, it's great stuff, very fun. Um, and so much for $2.99. This book is great. This whole series has been really fun. Uh, definitely check out Radical Comics when you get a chance. And lastly, I'm probably running out of time, but we're going to talk about the zombies that ate the world again. As it's been pointed out, this is issue three of the, as it's been pointed out, this is a reprint for previous stuff by Devil's Due. Uh, still very funny stuff. Great idea. What if zombies aren't just you know, running around trying to eat people, but they're just kind of uh, calm and lucid and just... Uh, walking around town, just doing whatever they want to do. That's hilarious to me. It's a great idea for a book, and it still pays off. Those these funny little things that happen in L.A. every day with zombies and humans interacting. Very fun stuff from Guy Davis and Jerry Frizen. Definitely check it out if you can get the chance. That's it for this week. I'm sorry it was rushed, but I got a lot of books to cram in there. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.